Hey, welcome back to See You Live. I'm here today with uh, Jacob Hogue and Patrick Marker, who just launched their new venture, Alcaria, two veteran chefs from Barcelona, executive chef and sous chef for um, about a decade, right? Yes. Uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's natural for any longtime chef to eventually want to embark on their own restaurant, right? Um, what made you guys decide that you want to do that together? Are you guys like BFFs or? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, kind of. I mean, we got the joke at Barcelona, like he's the dad of the kitchen and I was the mom of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been together for 10 years. We both had like the same idea of what we wanted to do, same style cuisine. And it just really felt like a natural fit. Like we just, we could finish each other's sentences and stuff like that and knew what the other one was going to do without even having to talk to each other. So it just felt really natural. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've been able to, to realize that we can trust in each other. Um, like he was saying, we have a lot of the same ideas. We, we kind of uh, think the same way um, about, you know, what we're looking for in, you know, the restaurant experience for the guest and, and what we're looking for in our employees. Uh, so it's, it's really scary to, you know, to start a new venture. And I think that you know that when you have someone that has your back uh, and, and shares a lot of the same things, ideas that you do then it makes it a little less scary yeah and you're both familiar with how it all works and exactly you know, kind of, yeah it's awesome so like when you were conceptualizing what elements did each of you bring to the table how did you bring that all together I think just like overall like the design and element and stuff I think that was Pat's strong suit he had like the farmhouse feel that really came natural to him and then I think just knowing each other's profiles like tweaking the entree dishes together, just adding a little extra spice or a different sauce or something, like tweaking each other's ideas is one of the big things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, one of the big things is we were able to uh, tap one of our friends uh, that we've worked with for a long time, Michael, to kind of lead the bar program because that would be, um, you know, one of our weaknesses, you know, being back in the kitchen. We have a lot of the same strengths, but then there were some pieces that we were missing. Um, you know, we, we know what we're looking for in service, but you know, getting this, this serving staff trained and, and to the caliber that we want, you know, we needed to bring someone in that could, could definitely add to that experience. Yeah. So. That was one of the things that I noticed when I went in there. Um, there was a heavy focus on like a vast wine list, a curated cocktail menu, which is a lot different from what a lot of people are doing, like the 50 taps of craft beer. Was that intentional to kind of steer away from that? Uh, well, we kind of, it was kind of one of those situations where we were going to work with what we had. Um, there was already an eight tap system there. Um, and we thought, thought that we could, um, you know, with those taps have enough of uh, variety that we could kind of, you know, have good offerings and then not just have uh, things on the menu just for the sake of being able to say we've got 32 tap, you know, two, 32 draft beers. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of the same thing with the wine list. We came from Barcelona, where they have a very, very nice, you know, nationally recognized wine list, but it was also very large, and we don't have that kind of space. So we we decided we were going to work with a couple of our friends um, that sell wine, and that we were going to try to find some of the best things that we could could find, um, and not just go for for quantity. We mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that everything told a story, uh, and that was like you know, it would fit in with the food that we want to serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Michael really thought out the cocktail list really well. Like, he wanted to make an impact, like, you know, taking a Manhattan, just putting a twist on that and making people really rethink it, bringing some of the Amaros, which are really big right now, into the mix. So he really put a lot of energy into that cocktail list, and it's been surprisingly selling really well. I've never heard so many compliments on cocktails ever, and I've been in the restaurant business a long time. So we've been selling more cocktails more than anything mm -hmm. overall, so it's crazy. And then like the, with the vineyards we're using around the world, like we're trying to use the uh, smaller ones that have stories behind them. And uh, vintage wine, we're using them as well. And Heidelberg is a bigger distributor, so we kind of get a balance of a smaller vineyard and larger distributor. Yeah. Oh, right. So. Okay, yeah. Well, what you were saying about cocktails, how it was like a twist on what people are familiar with, that seems to be like a thread throughout your restaurant. I know that when we were talking at first, when you were just conceptualizing the menu, what you were aiming for was, you know, familiar dishes with kind of a unexpected twist. How yeah. do you think that you've executed that? 
I think we're doing pretty well. So we like to define ourselves kind of like new American, rustically refined is kind of what we're going for. Mm -hmm. And I think like one of the dishes that Pat hit a home run on is the chicken and waffles. It's a hot chicken and waffles, but he took the waffle and incorporated some ham and cheese into it and just herbs. And then just making that nice spicy chicken on top with some horseradish pickles. So I think that was a big twist. And then some of the other things, like the pork shank, we're doing like a Korean barbecue sauce that just really upped the game on that. But a classic American pork dish, but just adding those Korean flavors to it. And then taking some grits and just adding some cheddar and fresh herbs and stuff. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went there, um, with the menu, with the cocktail list, with the vibe, um, it just wasn't what I expected from a restaurant in the university district, you know? Uh, I imagine families gathering there, young professionals gathering there. What drew you to that area specifically? Um, it, it just felt like a great neighborhood to walk in. Like, when you go around the block, you're close to the short north. Um, the rent is still a big part that is still cheap enough to be in that area without having short north rent because it can be expensive. And then just like the more we went there, it just felt natural, it felt comfortable. You, and it has a very diverse community and that's what we really wanted. We wanted to have anyone be able to come, it be walkable and just anyone welcome. And that felt really inviting in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest thing. Yeah, it seemed like uh, there were a lot of young professionals in the area, but one of the things that we found is that there's also a lot of, uh, you know, Ohio State professors. There's a lot of empty nesters that are just to the east of us. So we've, we've met a bunch of our neighbors so far. It's been really cool. Um, you know, we, we intentionally didn't put paper up over the windows when, when we were doing our renovation. We wanted people to, to, you know, come in, stop in, say hi. We wanted them to kind of be invested in what we were doing. Um, and it's been great because we've had people, um, you know, we've been open for three days now and we've had people that have already been in more than once. So um, I think they were really, really excited um, that a restaurant like that we were planning on doing or wanted to do uh, was moving into the neighborhood. I think there was a, a space for it. Um, I know that um, Till and Dragonfly that did very well there. So I think people can appreciate the you know the the, the slightly elevated cuisine, um, but then we just want to provide a place where they feel nice and comfortable, and you know it can be an everyday kind of place to go to. Certainly, mm -hmm. certainly. I'll have to make it a point to stop back over there. So this has been Jacob Hogue and Patrick Merker from Al Korea. Make sure you stop by. It's on King Avenue, uh, where Angry Baker used to be. Thanks again for joining me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us.